you were coming up here, the, the if you look to your right, the, the sort of the entrance hole there was the cistern where the stones from the tomb area had had fallen in and then down. Uh, Netzer found the entrance here inside a deep end, a very highly decorated, high quality of limestone sarcophagus, coffin, snake. to the burial chamber inside. Herod loved Egypt. He probably loved Cleopatra too in certain ways, That's actually. Right. Um, and and uh, she uh, was in Egypt during the first third of Herod's reign here. So they, they knew each other. And he loved all things Egypt. And you wonder if he decided to one up the pyramid. I'll have the same shape. I'll make mine round. And then the burial is below. In front is the nefesh. Nefesh. That's the funeral monument. Now it sat here. This is a reconstruction of it, but much smaller. You see the footprint of this object? Put it here. From mm. there to there to there oh to here. Gosh. And then do the height. You could see it from Jerusalem. And you see he's using all of the Greco-Roman architectural forms. He's using, he's using the Doric order. He's using the Corinthian order. I'm sorry, the Ionic order. And he's using the Corinthian order. He's using all of them, both square and round. I mean, what a creative thing that he did. We have enough of these pieces left to know that this is what it looked like. Most of the pieces we don't have, but we have just enough. You see, he wants a roof, but it's not going to be pyramid. It's going to be circular and concave, double circle. When he built with the Corinthian capital and then the urn on top. It's unbelievable. The pieces of stone that you do see are the very, very bottom base, kind of the boring base you see over here. And if any of you work in wood, like with routers and things, you know, there are bits to do, kind of, try that with limestone with a chisel, all right? That's the simple part of the nefesh. Nefesh, here's the idea. Remind me of your name. George. George, all right? You all know George pretty well. I'm just meeting George. And here he is, and he's a fine specimen of a, human gentleman, right? And you can see him, and, and here he is. And if, if you say, who is George, you describe him in a certain way. I bet an orange hat would be part of it, right? You describe him in a bird orange, in a, certain, in a certain way, in a certain way, right? Uh, eventually, inshallah, it will be another half a century, George's body will die, right? But this isn't the real George. The real George is something inside which I don't know yet, but many of you know. All these other qualities that are much more real. You know, the generosity and the kindness and the goodness and the, all of these things, right? That's the real George. What happens to that? No, of course, there's afterlife and Jesus and everything, right? What did Herod think? In the first century, Jews did not have a not all of them had a very well-developed idea as to what happens to the real George. Jesus helps us understand that, but not all of them were listening to him. And so the idea was, somehow, we know the body is here, it's going to decay. But somehow out front, we do something that's going to be public that represents the inside of who's here. And we call it nefesh. That's the Hebrew word. Nefesh means, it means breath, it means life, it means soul. <coughs> if you want an English translation, you can use the word soul. This would be Herod's. At 
least how he wants himself to be remembered. Herod went all around this land building monuments to himself. Jewish writings, Mishnah and Jesus said, don't build monuments to yourself. Let what you have done, let what you are be your monument. Let people remember that instead. Herod was kind of super selfless, right? Yeah. In a kind of a way. In a kind of a way. So when it says, let your good deeds shine before others, so they'll... Yeah. With the Greek word there, could it be connected to Nefesh? I'd have to look at it and see. I wouldn't... The, the theology is there. I'd have to look at the word and see. You, no, no, because, I mean, you, it's not the word soul. Um, but but it, it's the the good deeds represent that reality of who you actually are. Which in Hebrew is, is, is described as that inmost... When God created Adam, he breathed into him the breath of life. It's that thing, right? That then results in the good deeds that you do. So that's the connection between them. But the and the idea would certainly be the same. <coughs> Paul, when Jesus says that, that yes. word's actually been a point of study for me recently. The nephesh. Turn um, the microphone well, around so they no. just pointed <laughs> to you. <laughs> the, our translation soul is a little lacking. Yeah. Because we think of it as a disembodied yeah. being. Yeah. Like there's the physical us and then there's the spiritual. Yeah. But in the Hebrew way of thinking, it was the person, right? The whole being, the person. And the two were That's right. tied together. So when Jesus talks about us being raised to new life, it's to a new physical body. Um, the is that, would you agree with that? I would that? agree with that. The, the, the Hebraic way of thinking is much more holistic of all aspects of like to of dissect. Life. We like to dissect and separate and categorize. That way we can justify certain behaviors. But but the whole Old Testament is very holistic and integrative and and full. But could that, that body way. also be in a different dimension? Like Jesus was when he resurrected. Do you mean? Yeah. I, I guess. I can't speak to that yet because I'm still on this side. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a passage in the Old Testament, I can't remember where it is, but it refers to a, to a dead nephesh. Yeah. It sounds like Job. So if there's a... Sounds like if Job. There's, a de there can't, there's not a dead... S they came across a dead body. Or they yeah. Or it was talk I know it was talking about you're unclean if you come in contact with a dead nephesh. Uh. Well, if we think of it as... Di if we dissect it and we think yeah. the soul is something separate from the body, then that doesn't make any sense. No. So Nefesh obviously has a broader meaning, meaning than this disembodied spirit. Yeah, the life of the person. Right. The image of God is somewhere tied with that as well. In you, there's, there's a lot there. There's a lot. Anyway, Herod wants his to be this. You can see it from Jerusalem. Look at him. Yay. Uh, what we need to do is go fill our own Nefesh a bit. We'll have some lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and get on the bus, go to, to Bethlehem, and we can start now.